second topic which i thought would be interesting now uh, uh, maybe many of you are not exposed to it and hopefully not is bribery and corruption but it does happen it's a reality of our lives of our country and all the countries in the world and we often wonder what happens to these people who make millions by being corrupt i mean don't they get hit by karma you know we uh, we associate because we we humans judge very easily so we associate them as being greedy or unscrupulous and uh, they make money which is far beyond what a person needs because they are in positions of authority and we wonder what that i mean where is divine justice i mean do they ever get affected by this or not i'll tell you how it really works how the how the laws universal laws work in this because the universal laws are really very different from our uh, human laws or our legal system now under a human legal system you are caught you know being corrupt and you are making money because of your position authority and uh, of course if you get caught and if you proved that you have been corrupt then they lock you up and they <laughs> take your uh, assets but that's not how it works in the spirit world that's not how divinity looks at you i mean it's not that okay the day you die you face judgment day like they call it and uh, you know there's some bearded uh, old fellow sitting there saying i'm god and uh, looks at you and say oh so you made so many millions in corrupt bribery and corruption okay 10 years in hell <laughs> nobody's there to do that that, that that's that's more fantasy that's more fairy tale <clears throat> you see uh, two laws are affected in this one is the law of karma of obviously and the other is the law of abundance but largely the law of abundance plays a greater role than the law of karma now what happens is see when when somebody is corrupt and when i say corruption i mean i don't mean moral corruption or mental corruption i mean uh, 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 financial corruption or, or uh, you know where where you use your authority your power or your place to take more than what you are entitled to by using your authority i mean i'm talking of that corruption so don't don't mix it up with any other corruption and we have a lot of that in our country there is endemic corruption but no no but india is not the only uh, uh, place in the world or even developed nations there is a lot of corruption there are only about 10 nations where corruption is very low like like uh, uh, scandinavia new zealand and a few others like that but otherwise everywhere there is enough corruption now <clears throat> what really happens how does how does this work on the karmic level see because the law of karma says that you have to cause pain and suffering to another human being to inka karma now if i pay some money to somebody to pass my say tax return or give me a certificate or a clearance or to expedite my papers i am not hurting anybody that person is not hurting anybody we are just mutual benefit so how will the law of karma kick in the fact is it doesn't till the corruption is actually causing pain and suffering to another human being 
द लॉ ऑफ कर्मा विल नॉट किक इन बिकॉज फॉर दैट समबडी हैज टू फील पेन नाउ इफ देर इज एन ऑफिसर हु इज गिविंग सम सैंक्शन और सम परमिशन और ही इज गिविंग प्रेफरेंस टू यू ओवर समबडी एल्स एंड दैट पर्सन डज इन नो दैट यू हैव गॉट प्रेफरेंस then the law of karma doesn't kick in because nobody is hurt nobody is suffering pain you see but does that mean the person goes scot free no because there is the law of abundance yes in a case where your corruption or your bribery does cause harm pain or suffering then the karma will kick in So suppose I am a corrupt officer, and I sanction, say, uh, uh, I give a completion certificate to a bridge or something, you know, and take money when I know that it's an under uh, 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 done, uh, uh, it, it, it's 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 not done properly, or or there is some problem with it, and I give the clearance, something happens. people die or they suffer injury something yes then there is a karmic effect sure so where the corruption does hurt harm or injure somebody the law of karma will kick in definitely but in most cases and many cases it doesn't nobody is hurt nobody is harmed nobody suffers this is where the law of abundance works. Now you see, I'll tell you how that works. Abundance is the amount of wealth and prosperity that uh, you enjoy at any point of time in your life. Now, most of us who have a uh, uh, most of, all of us have a blueprint, and that blueprint ensures that you have reasonable. prosperity to go through life unless you have a lifetime of suffering great financial distress and loss then you go through a lifetime of poverty and deprivation but otherwise no you are always kept your head above water means your blueprint ensures that your head is above water yes you may dunk down a few times you may have ups and downs but you surface back financially and there are times when you have loads and loads of money you're comfortable sometimes you have little money but you're still comfortable you're very you're okay you're taken care of so this is how abundance works in your blueprint now there is a certain amount of abundance that is allocated to you in a lifetime and that abundance is divided over your lifetime so at no point of time do you go so low that you are starving and on the streets yes there are peaks when you make a lot of money you enjoy a lot of wealth so it's distributed abundance is distributed now if you remember as i told you and i've written this that your blueprint once it is made is like a oil slick the quantum remains the same the shape keeps changing according to the waves it's like that so according to the decisions that you take the abundance can come sooner or later but the quantum of abundance remains the same so sometimes you make good decisions you hit the jackpot you make a lot of money you enjoy a lot of wealth for some time then suddenly you make some bad decisions you lose a lot of wealth or you lose business or whatever happens and you go through a lean period in financial so this keeps happening it, it is like the oil slick that keeps changing shape in on top of the water now what you do when you are in a position of authority and you exercise that authority to 
take rides or make a lot of money. You are exercising an option. It is free will. So essentially, at that point of time, what you do is you let in a lot of abundance in your life, which is actually not as per the blueprint distribution. Now your blueprint has been made by a higher intellect at a different level. And it has been made in such a way that it cushions you through the bad times in your life when the when you're when you are squaring up your negative karmas, that abundance is distributed in such a way it, it, it gives you a cushion. Now what you do is when you open yourself up to taking that abundance at one shot and one point of time, like a vacuum cleaner you to suck up all the abundance of that lifetime into that few years that you are in authority. Now all those cushions that were mandated in your blueprint have disappeared. Why? Because you have converted them into this opportunity at this point in time and sucked up that abundance. It may lie as paper currency in your house, it may be in a bank, it may be in, in the in the uh, 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 mansions and houses you own in whatever form you have it. But basically you sucked up all that abundance that was distributed over that one lifetime. As I said, you've changed the shape of the oil slick on the water. The abundance remains the same. Now, at the times when you come across those problems, those, those karmic completions, that cushioning is not there. So if you are hit by say bad health, personal tragedy, uh, public humiliation, no help. You have sucked up all the abundance, you have sucked up all your good karma. Basically what you have done is you have collected all that positive karma which is distributed in your life into this form of abundance. This excess wealth which is far far more than what you can use or require. Now you don't have those cushions. So then the bump, the, the ride becomes a little bumpy or sometimes extremely painful. During the latter part of your life where the cushion is out is taken away. Suppose you keep accumulating the wealth and it goes far beyond the abundance that you have in this lifetime. Okay, so you've dipped into the positive karma of the next lifetime. And if you suck away so much, then yes, you have it in that form, in the form of wealth. But that leaves very little positive karma for your next lifetime. Now when you are going to square up your negative karmas, at that time you will not get help. You will not have enough balance of positive karma to give you that relief. So your future lifetimes become extremely difficult. Including this lifetime where if your blueprint has a problem, that you have to face, a challenge you have to face, it will be very difficult for you to get relief from it. Because you sucked up all the positive karma, all the abundance in the form of this wealth and put it into your assets. So the law of abundance then kicks in and kind of teaches you this. Not the law of karma, because you've not hurt or harm anybody, you just converted your positive karma into wealth which is far in excess of what you need but without realizing the implication that it has on the rest of your life and maybe future lifetimes. So it's not that you are judged by divinity. Divinity doesn't judge you at all. 
Divinity is not judgmental. We are judgmental. Human beings are judgmental. The universe only makes laws. You get caught in that law, that's your problem. But God doesn't say, oh, you are a corrupt fellow, or you are a corrupt person. No. You have just used up your positive karmas and converted it into a form that is redundant. How many houses can you use? How much wealth can you use? And mostly if it's illegal wealth, you can't even show it, you can't even use it. It's it's just a psychological security that, oh, I have got so, so much wealth. When most of it you can't show or use because you'll immediately get caught by human laws. So you mess up both ways. <laughs> of course, that does not stop people from being greedy. But this is how it works, actually. Not the law of karma, but the law of abundance comes in. And that teaches you a lesson. It takes two hands to clap. Sure. You spoke from the point of view that... Of that taking. I'm coming to that. <laughs> I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. Same? My question was that then there are people who also give charity. Because they have yeah. uh, sucked away yeah. so much of it. I know, I know. No, see, the, the point is that uh, uh, there are two things about uh, people who take bribes or who are corrupt. One is a person who does it intentionally. Okay, like I am in a position of authority, you come to me, I say, okay, this is how much you have to pay me for this. That is one type. There, you, you have kicked in the law of abundance unequivocally. There's no escape from that. There's another category where you are part of a corrupt system. And whether you want it or not, whether you like it or not, certain amount is going to come to you. Because you are part of that system and everyone shares that ill-gotten wealth. And I know this firsthand because people have come to me and told me this. People in authority say that, listen, I don't want the money. But I have to take it because that is part of the system and I can't be a whistleblower, I'll lose my job, they'll, they'll probably kill me if I, if I blew the whistle on them. You know, it, it's so endemic. So you get the money whether you want it or not. Now what I tell these people is, listen, uh, you have got this wealth, it's come to you, fine. Yes, there is something you can do. Either you can give it entirely to charity and not keep it. Which brings you back to your original position, nothing is disturbed. Or at least give half of it to charity if you feel that oh, I need a little bit of money and I could use it. Fine, keep half of it, give half to charity. You know, that way, at least you will productively use that money. Again, as I said, the law of karma is not uh, 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 sort of activated, but at least you've taken care of that much part of wealth which you don't really need and you're using it to uh, 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 help some uh, help humanity so if you are in that position where you have to receive something which you really don't want and which is not part of your uh, as i said intention to make then part with that in a, a charitable way effective charity so that really that money is used to alleviate somebody's suffering, humanity, some some some, some aspect of human suffering. So that would that would serve the purpose. Now uh, as as uh, you mentioned it takes two hands to clap, there is a receiver and a giver. Now normally the giver is well I would say go spot free in that sense because a neither neither does karma uh, uh, hit that person unless the giver has given that bribe and as I said some untoward 
situation turns up and people are hurt or injured or somebody is suffering because of that, then yes, the karma is equally divided between the giver and the taker. If that is not the case, if, if it's just something that you are making a transaction to say like get your uh, papers passed or you know, uh, 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 just just something to, to speed in your uh, uh, permissions, then the giver has, has no, no uh, 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 karmic implication or implication of abundance. I have to ask 